Hello everyone, welcome to St Oswald's Church and to our worship which begins with an opening prayer, please join in with the responses, and then the collect, the special prayer for today, the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Lord, reveal to us your glory that we may joyfully praise you. Lord, receive our prayers that we may learn to trust in you. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that each in their vocation and ministry may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to join with our choir for the first hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. from the Gospel of St Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Jesus went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. When did this man get these things? these things they asked what's this wisdom that he has been given what are these remarkable miracles he is performing isn't this the carpenter isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James Joseph Judas and Simon 
aren't his sisters here with us and they um, took offence at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went among, around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached the, pe to, uh, preach the people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed with oil many people who were ill and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In last week's reading, we saw Jesus taking a fatherly role towards a woman in very great need. This week's reading from Mark's Gospel prompts reflection on a different family relationship, that of sibling, brother. The people of Nazareth refer to Jesus as the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon, all common Jewish names at the time. And they mention his sisters also. There's some disagreement about what that might actually mean. Are these half-sisters and brothers of Jesus, children of Joseph by a previous marriage? Or are the terms brother and sister being used loosely to refer to other relations, maybe cousins? The most natural understanding is to regard these brothers and sisters as children of Mary and Joseph who joined the family in the years following the birth of Jesus himself and to whom he was their elder brother. Do you have an older brother? Or maybe you are an older brother. Older brothers and sisters too often play a significant role as protector, mentor and example. Here's just one instance that comes to mind. I recently finished reading Michelle Obama's memoir, Becoming. It reminds me of the review on Amazon. I gave that book to my mother for Christmas and she still hasn't become Michelle Obama. Be that as it may, uh, in the book, uh, Michelle Obama tells how, as a young girl, she learned to leave behind her natural shyness and reserve and to make new friends in the community, in the slipstream, as it were, of her more confident and outgoing older brother, Craig. That older brotherly role of protector, mentor and example was one which we see Jesus taking towards his disciples in our reading. Having shown them the ropes, he gives them a job 
and his very own authority to get on with that job. It's a role and relationship he takes towards us too, as his adopted sisters and brothers. So St Paul speaks of Jesus as the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters in the family of believers. Interestingly, perhaps the most famous example of an elder brother in the Bible uh, is a negative one. You probably remember the parable of the prodigal son told by Jesus in Luke's Gospel. In that parable, the younger of two brothers insults his father and throws the family into disarray by prematurely demanding his inheritance and offering it to a distant land where he wastes that inheritance on riotous living before returning home destitute and, it must be added, deeply penitent. Whereas their father welcomes him with open arms and throws a feast to celebrate, the elder brother is filled with resentment, objects strongly to the festivities, and excludes himself from this joyful reunion. I found that in discussion groups, people often have a lot of sympathy for the older brother, and understandably so. If the younger brother is to be fully readmitted to the family, into the bosom of the family, then he will be living off what in due course should be the inheritance of his sibling, having squandered his own inheritance. The older brother will therefore pay the price for his younger brother's return to the family fold. Luke presents this parable as directed by Jesus at the pious folk who scorned his friendship with those they regarded as unworthy sinners. But I wonder if Jesus had first preached the parable to himself. He knew that welcoming sinners would ultimately prove costly to himself, leading to death on the cross. He had a choice to make, and choose he did. As the children's chorus puts it, I had a debt I could not pay. He paid the price he did not owe. I needed someone to wash my sins away. But now I sing a brand new song, for Jesus came and he washed my sins away. Unlike the older brother in the parable, Jesus, our elder brother, made the choice for love and joy. He chose to follow his heavenly Father's heart, sharing and showing God's love for humankind at great cost to himself, but for the joy that was set before him. The joy of being firstborn among many new sisters and brothers. The joy of a true and loving older brother. Let's join together now in the family prayer which he taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our next hymn is a prayer to Jesus, Lord of all hopefulness, asking him to be with us 
each day and for the whole course of our lives. Lord Jesus, help us to have faith that you will work through us when we live among and talk to others, just as the disciples did at our reading today. Help us to have faith in your promise to provide all we need and not to get pinned down by all the modern must-haves of life. Help us as your followers to lose the new for broken approach to our possessions and instead try to repair old things so they are not thrown away. You have provided more than adequate resources for us, but we have, to become, we have become complacent and careless and impatient. We ask for your help in re-adopting the values of care, conservation and repair in our lives so that we can really work at friendships and at relationships and we don't discard them when things don't always go well. Help us to rely on the strength you supply to all those who have faith in you to bind us together with the folk we live with, the tasks we undertake and the possessions you have given us that we need to treasure and value far more than we do. The world is a wonderful place, Lord, so full of riches. Let us not squander the valuable resources you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in a special prayer for Afghanistan, fill the vacuum left by foreign troops leaving that country. Make your presence felt among the Afghan authorities negotiating with the Taliban. Show the Taliban that fanaticism never works, that they should work out how to bring the best ideas from both sides to forge a lasting peace and at last end decades and decades of conflict there. Instill Afghanistan's leaders of all factions with wisdom, tolerance, patience and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we ask you to guide all those in power in this country to work for the good of us all at this time of Covid. Give them the clarity of vision to know what is important to you. 
help our leaders put people's lives at the forefront of all policies so as to line up with your priorities. Guide broadcasters and journalists to remain honest and independent and serve us with the truth about COVID. Quell the fears of so many in positions of authority about telling how it really is. We pray for more honesty in politics, more collaboration, for less adversarial politics where one side must be right and the other side must be wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, please help us reflect where we would like to be in five years' time as a church. Let the ideas flow in as to how we can all attract more folk to St Oswald's. Free us up to think outside the box. Fill our minds, our church buildings and our gardens with new ideas, new activities to show we are constantly moving forward. Lord, help us get passers-by, both adults and children, to be awestruck by evidence of the growing eco-activities around the church. Help us to come up with permanent displays of what all members of the church, and particularly young people, are doing in activities to promote a better environment and a greater community. Lastly, Lord, please comfort all those affected by COVID. Stay alongside folks such as our friend Margaret, recovering from a stroke in a care home, but seeing few visitors at present due to COVID restrictions. Give her and all others we know who suffer loneliness and sudden change hope of a way through. Support all who suffer depression, mental or physical stress. Bring calm and healing and reassurance to all those in hospital. Sit alongside those recently bereaved, particularly those left behind and now living alone. Help us all to remember your promise that you will be with us always. Thank you for listening, Lord. Amen. After the blessing, please keep watching for a message from our bishop about a new course which could be for you if you are keen on seeing the church engaging in local mission. 
and that will be followed by details of an online meeting tomorrow evening with a speaker from the Children's Society on youth, young people and uh, mental health. This is a really vital subject as we move out of lockdown and hopefully the meeting will lead to some practical initiatives. Do please contact me for joining details if this is something on your heart. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Are you a pioneer? If they spot opportunities, going into new communities, going out there and, and seeing where God is already at work. We recognise the need to invest in pioneers here in the diocese and we're doing that by encouraging you and equipping you to reimagine your future in new and creative ways. So will you join us?